Hey everyone, thanks for coming. Um, okay, so let's just get let's just get into it. Using Pareto's principle for securing AWS with SCPs. So let me turn on my remote. That would help. And let me put it over here. All right, cool. So a little about me. Uh, I like AWS. I've been doing security for a while. Whatever, blah blah blah. I took some tests. That's not a big deal. Uh, I'm also really into coffee. Uh, this is my real coffee set at home. Uh, so if you want to talk about single origins and uh, pour overs and recipes, I could talk ad nauseum about that. Uh, I also run a podcast called Getting Into InfoSec, and it's designed to help folks uh, get into security and by interviewing folks that are out there and see how they got in, because everybody's path into security is different. And then I also wrote a book as well, because, well, you know, I, it's just kind of helping solve the problem as well. So, like, if you sat down with me for like an hour over coffee, what would I tell you? This is what I would tell you. And I like Hawaiian shirts. So on Fridays at work, you see me, uh, I'll probably be wearing a Hawaiian shirt. So that's a little about me. Cool. So uh, I have no idea about you guys. Uh, this is the first time that the Cloud Village existed. So I just want to get to know everyone out there a little bit. How many folks out there manage AWS accounts uh, 10 or less? 10 or less AWS accounts. OK. How many manage 25 or more accounts? All right, all right. And how many manage 75 or more accounts? All right, very cool, very cool. OK. And how many of you guys are using AWS organizations and SCPs? OK, cool, cool. So um, what's Pareto's principle, right? The idea is that with just a little bit of work, you can accomplish a lot of work, OK, or a lot of results. So 20% of effort, and you get 80% of the results. Um, and that's where SCPs come in. It, they're just beautiful. So with only a little bit of um, code, right, a few lines of configuration, you can really apply a lot of security to a lot of your accounts. Uh, but there's a lot of steps that are required before that. And also we'll talk a little about cloud security issues for those that are, uh, you know, not too familiar about AWS. Again, just trying to level set here. So what are some common issues, right? IAM, having keys and source code. Um, having really egregious permissions on um, boxes, like for say, you know, EC2 star, IAM star, uh, storage, leaky buckets, right? We've heard too many stories. Logging, right? I mean, really, what AWS is is you're giving the, the like infinite amount of resources globally, right, to an engineer, and this is what you have, but this is what you end up with, right? Uh, it's just it, it's, it's um, you know, AWS has that shared security model, we all know about it, but still, it makes it very easy for someone to just trip over themselves. And so, you know, we have leaky buckets. Uh, I think we all know, or we may know about all these leaky buckets that are out there. Uh, someone even created a GitHub page that lists all the S3 bucket leaks out there. Very convenient if you're trying to prove your case or just keep track. And there just, you know, it goes on and on and on and on. And someone said that there is like 9 billion data records of S3 uh, from S3 bucket leaks. <coughs> Same thing, IAM is the new perimeter. So, you know, no longer is it network security, it's more IAM. Um, everybody might have heard of a Capital One breach uh, recently. So, um, you know, a lot of things went wrong there, but you know, we don't want permissions like EC2 star, I am sorry. I have actually seen this out there. Um, I have seen public machines that are running WAFs with EC2 star on them, and I'm like having a heart attack. Um, and you know, in this case, you know, I was at a company once where uh, someone emailed their IAM keys to someone else, and I'm not sure how the keys got compromised, but $40,000 later, uh, a lot of EC2 instances were deployed, and um, it, was not, it was not fun. AWS did reverse it, but still, we don't want to be in that situation. Yeah. Uh, who here has heard of code spaces? Oh. <laughs> All right. So code spaces was like a GitHub-like uh, company that provided as you can see, rock solid and secure affordable hosting. So we all know it's secure because it says it's secure, right? So um, this was their website on June 14th, 2014. This was their website on June 18th, 2014. 
their root keys got compromised, and the attacker basically deleted all their backups, all their instances, everything, and they literally went out of business overnight. Okay, so this is a target for us, for for AWS folks, for cloud folks. This is our target. We need to know this. Uh, it's a part of our history, and so it's something that uh, I recommend everyone go ahead and look up. I pulled this from uh, archive.org, and you can do that same as well. So, why AWS organizations and SCP? Okay, so basically, with a few lines of configuration or quote unquote code we can enable a lot of change and a lot of protection in our accounts. Um, but the reason I did this talk is because, so SCP has been around for a little bit, and I'm still not seeing too many organizations taking, taking advantage of it, at least to their full extent. I think people are a little afraid of SCP, um, but it's a really good way to guard your security um, and, and protect yourself uh, if you have things even securely configured properly. So I'll talk a little about multi-account strategy. It's kind of uh, a foundation to this. So if you are um, using multiple accounts, you want to take advantage of the multi-account strategy. You want to have a logging account for your, your logs to go to, okay? Uh, you want to have a security account for your security ops and your tools to run from. Uh, you want to have, you know, networking uh, where you can do your transit gateways and, and things like that, shared services, and, and on and on and on. So it's really important to do, uh, take advantage of the multi-account strategy. Uh, AWS, you know, first started off, I don't think they realized how, <laughs> how, how big this would explode. And so they've, you know, incorporated some multi-account stuff. It's still... Um, you know, it, I would look it up. It, it's it's part of the well well architected framework. Um, I'm not going to talk anything negative right now. So, um, so once you have this set up, okay, then you can take advantage full advantage of AWS organizations. So it kind of works on top of that. Uh, you have your master account. Um, if anyone's familiar with any sort of directory, you have different OUs, and you could have sub OUs, and you could apply policies at the OU level. So this is really how um, security control policies work. Okay. And so this is kind of a, a quick outline of what I'm going to talk about. Um, you know, if you're coming in starting with AWS organizations and SCPs from scratch. Okay. So we have the master account. Everything starts with the master account. Um, how many, not to embarrass you, but uh, how many how many here have master accounts with resources in them? You don't have to raise your hand. It's okay. So um, so having a master account with resources is bad. You don't want to do that. Um, why? Because when you're going to apply a policy, you don't want to apply the policy at the master level. You want to apply it at a different OU level. And so you want a master account that's empty and has no resources. So that's really your biggest step in all this is getting, uh, creating a master account, moving your consolidated billing to another, uh, to that account. Um, there's a few steps involved. Uh, one, call your rep, um, create the account, create a S3 bucket for that account where your consolidated billing reports can go to, uh, and then create a support account. And if you have, if you're on an enterprise uh, level support plan, then definitely your rep will take care of most of this for you. Um, in one organization, it took a month for us to get this done. Uh, we had to sign a new contract, had to go through legal, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, what is this? Why is this? And they had to sign it with ink. Not, it wasn't DocuSign. I was like, really? So um, it was quite interesting. Um, but after you have the new AWS account, then you can create the org and link and unlink accounts, and it's pretty straightforward from that, from there. And here you are. So, so now once you have your master account, you create the organization, okay? Uh, organizations has two modes. Uh, there's billing mode and then the full access, the full features mode, which lets you take advantage of service control policies and, and everything I'm going to talk about today. So if you have an organization already and you have a master account with no resources, then go ahead and make sure your organization is enabled for full features. It's just uh, a really quick uh, CLI command or you can go into console and, and, and do it there as well. You also might need to increase your... Um, Limits on AWS organizations as well. So um, I have 10 here because that's what I was doing in my experimental account. 
Um, but yeah, so you might want to look into that as well. Okay, so here I, I've created an organization. Um, I'm logged in. I created a couple different OUs. It's like super easy. And hopefully everyone has a, a, a dev, staging, and prod environment. Uh, and hopefully not everyone is doing everything in, in one account or, or prod, right? So uh, this is the ideal way. Um, so I created a prod, staging, and dev account. I also created an other account because there's a few accounts that I just didn't know where they should go. So um, you might have a subsidiary that you're, you know, they want to have their own uh, deal with AWS and they don't want you messing with that. So you know, other would might, might be a good place to put it. And you could have sub OUs. Uh, there's no need to create just three top level um, OUs. You could have uh, many different sub OUs. It's really up to you how complicated you want it to go. Uh, the only one that really would be outside is the is your root account, your master account, and that would be in the root OU. Pretty straightforward. And then just go ahead and, and enable your service control policies. It's okay. Nothing's going to happen here. Just go ahead and enable it. All right. So applying SCPs. Okay, be really careful about SCPs. Um, I did say it's okay to enable them, yes. But when you're going to apply them, take the usual methods about applying it into dev, applying it into pro uh, staging, and then prod. Uh, you, you, these things are really powerful. Uh, they're instantaneous. And when you apply it at the OU level, it takes effect for all your accounts under your OU. So, you know, take that into consideration. Uh, and please, for... for Please don't deploy things on Friday. Just, just don't do it, okay? Um, okay, so in AWS organizations, this is not SCP directly, but when you have your master account set up, this is a really nice feature to take advantage of. Just create a cloud trail, if you don't have one already, create a cloud trail in your master account, and it will automatically apply to all your, uh, your whole organization. So you will only see this configuration when you're doing it from your master account. And so, of course, have that bucket in a separate account for logging, okay? Uh, and the reason it's in a separate account for logging is for integrity purposes, limited access. You don't want everyone to have access to that, to that logging account. And so, you go ahead and, and set this up, and you know, remember the name of your cloud trail. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, in the next one here, we have an SCP that now prevents anyone from stopping and deleting that trail. Okay, this is all available on, on AWS uh, on, on their uh, examples page, but you could also you know, I'll publish the slides. But here, what I'm referring to is uh, the specific cloud trail name that you specified. And the reason is that say you have other groups out there that maybe want to have their own cloud trail or want to do whatever, um, and you can let them. They can create their own cloud trails if they want. They can delete it. They can do whatever, but don't touch this cloud trail. So. Uh, with this SCP, it will allow you to stop. And you can see here, uh, I'm logged in as, as root, as admin, and I'm trying to disable it, and it says you don't have the necessary permissions. So it works. I have a question here. Yes. So earlier when you created that trail, you created it from master account for that, all the member accounts in that, one go? That's right. Yeah, I'll be happy to take questions at the end. So, uh, again, so, you know, we're trying, so VPC flow logs, right? You want to protect those, uh, possibly, if you really rely on them from a security purpose. Um, so, go, you know, this is a, um, a log, uh, sorry, service control policy that will protect them and, and, and prevent someone from deleting them. And, you know, you could tune to your liking, right? Do you want to specify a specific uh, VPC flow log? As, you, know, you, could, you could really play with it as much as you like. Okay. A lot of times, you have resources only in U.S. West and East, for example, or two or three regions. There's no reason to have all your regions enabled, and so this will kind of limit your attack surface on where regions would be set up. And your attack could come from outside or inside. I mean, a lot of times, employees, I don't want to say a lot of times, sometimes an employee could uh, set up an instance in I don't know, London or, or Asia um, with GPU instances and just do some crypto mining and no one would know about it until much later. Um, you know, it really depends how good your monitoring is, how mature your environment is for 
for looking at resources outside your environment. So again, this is not rocket science, uh, but this will limit your uh, attack surface. So it's a really good way to just, hey, I don't think we'll ever have a need for US, uh, um, US West 1 or anything outside of the US, whatever you can use. You know, you could just play with this uh, to your liking. I did have, oh, so one note is I put like EC2 describe, for example. So if I want to have a tool or if there's a tool that's going to do EC2 describe, uh, then I could run it and it won't break that tool. So if you have monitoring tools, then you want to add a couple not actions here uh, so that your tools won't break. Something to take into consideration. And so this is an example of uh, trying to launch something from a, a region that is not on that list. Uh, the next thing is limiting the type of instances that are running in your environment. And there's two ways to do it. You could do a deny or you could do a permit list. I'll show you both. In this case, um, I am denying these particular instance types, right? Um, is there a need for your organization to use a P3 instance, right, with like four GPUs? I don't know. Um, probably not. So in this case, we're limiting the type of instances uh, so that either accidentally or maliciously, we don't launch instances that are going to cost us thousands and thousands of dollars. And, and, and I want to uh, draw attention to the string like uh, condition here. It lets you use um, it lets you use a, a wildcard condition, so it's it's pretty pretty versatile. <clears throat> Here's one of allowing it. So you know I'm limiting to just general purpose uh, instances. So here we have a, a bunch of instances listed. We have A, T, M, and uh, M5 and M4. And so okay, that's all instances we need, right? It depends on your organization. You could actually uh, add more to this. You could limit it to particular AMIs if you want. You could limit, you know, you could have, uh, you can make this as restrictive as you want. You can have multiple SCPs. So you have this one for, for instance types and then another one for AMI. And of course it takes uh, the IAM precedence where it compiles all the permissions and takes the least um, or the most restrictive permission out of everything. Here's a good one, uh, limiting root actions, right? You want to deny root actions across your, your accounts. Um, and so this is a really good way to do so, uh, using the principal ARN. And um, you literally, as root, you can't do anything. I'm logged in as root, and I can't even do a describe on instances. I can't launch anything. I, I can't do a single thing. So it's really, really powerful. Um, this is one of my favorites. So. You know, if you have that founder that still has access to their root account, um, which happens a lot, right? The founder, because the email was created with their credit card and their email address. So uh, I, would, I would recommend, you know, you talk to them first before doing this. That might be a good idea. Um, you do want to keep your job. Here's another one. Uh, you want to enable encryption. So uh, you, no, you don't want to allow any objects to be put into your S3 buckets uh, unless they're meeting this criteria. And in this case, the criteria is that it's encrypted with AES-256, for example. Same thing with S3 uh, public access. Uh, here's another one. So I'm still experimenting with this a little bit. So, um, but. It, it seems to be working. Okay, so troubleshooting. Um, there's a lot of troubleshooting that I went through um, in this. I definitely recommend you take a deep reading of IM and IM syntax, especially when you're looking at the conditional operators and, and trying to put a list of things. Um, so it, it's, it's quite tricky, um, especially in this condition map, trying to define it. Uh, but you know it's it's um, it's all based on IM, so it, it's pretty straightforward. And you know, just some little like things. Even I was trying to do a uh, little Easter egg as far as a version number, and uh, turns out that you know AWS doesn't like that. Does anyone know what that date is? Oh, right. Yeah, the date it's supposed to be, yes. But uh, that date right there, November 5th, 1955. Does anybody know that date? <clears throat> yes, Back to the Future. Pretty good. Yeah, I was watching at the time. <clears throat> Actually, I have a few dates throughout the presentation 
Um, little Easter eggs from different things throughout movie history. So yeah, and then same thing here. Um, if you want to deny a role, uh, then you could specify the role. But then if you want to uh, specify an actual IM user, you will need to use the condition string not like. Um, that was quite annoying as well. So that's something there. Uh, this is a really cool website I found after doing a lot of this stuff anyway. Um, it's asecure.cloud. Uh, uh, the person that's created this is amazing. And, and uh, they have uh, service control policies, uh, security groups, a lot of different things that will let you even uh, put confirmation templates together and just deploy. Uh, of course, you know, deploy cautiously to uh, dev. But um, it's a good library of a lot of different service control policies. Uh, the ones I showed you are the ones that, that, that I created and kind of implemented. Um, but that person has a lot of ones like, uh, like uh, preventing people from deleting KMS keys, for example, right? Uh, that's a really good one. Um, so, I mean, imagine if, if, if someone deleted your KMS keys, you can no longer uh, decrypt your information. So uh, it's quite, quite precarious. And that's about it. This is my contact info. Um, I blog about stuff on AWS uh, quite some time, uh, you know, frequently. And uh, I'd like to open up for questions, if there's any questions. Yes? I thought the SCP about blocking root out of the account was really clever. Uh, but what do you do about the actions that can only be taken by the root account? Do you have to unapply the SCP? That's right. During a yeah. Process? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. You'd have so you have to take that into consideration uh, for things. I mean, I think AWS is working solely to limit those root actions. I'm kind of annoyed that there are still things that you need root for, but yeah, that's exactly right. Yes. How do you handle issues where people might over grant permissions because there's a tendency that we can only lock out sometimes in the future? Like we have over granted a permission or something to somebody. So the question is, uh, if I get it right, and the previous question was, um, do you have to, when you want to do things that require root action, uh, we are going to have to remove the service control policy. So that was the previous question. And this question is, what do you do about over permissioning? Yeah, like how do you, like, there's a possibility tendency that you might over grant a permission to somebody. So is it like two minutes to you over time that uh, maybe this person is not using these permissions that we have? Oh yeah, there are a few uh, tools that out there that would, that would give you, um, a list of permissions that are recently used by particular users, and AWS has some out of the box as well. Yes? Um, so you showed one of the slides where the master account is creating cloud trail, or the trail. Yes. Every sub member account. That's right. Does that mean that you can do that? That capability allows you to create any, like if you want to capture config rules and so on and so forth? It only applies to cloud trail. Only CloudTrail. So that, that screen there was a typical CloudTrail creation screen, uh, but you only you have that extra dialog box for um, when it's being done from the master account. And so all the settings that you have there are going to create a CloudTrail in each new account, or each account, uh, and any new accounts. Existing as well as new accounts. That's right. All regions all Well, depending on how you configure it. Yeah. So if you configure for all regions, then yeah, that'll apply. But it'll apply for the same bucket, and uh, the great part is for new accounts that are created later, which is uh, like a, a, a lifesaver. Yes? That bucket doesn't have to be in the master account. It can be in That's right. That's right. Yes? Um, one sort of observation, We've, when we went to uh, organizations, we also had to work with our procurement team to prevent anyone with a P card from being able to pay for an AWS account because we had a couple hundred of those done, scattered everywhere to pull them in. So if you're going to go organizations, Make friends with procurement. Yes, yes. Procurement is, uh, there are a couple tools out there actually that I found uh, that will um, help you find shadow IT uh, accounts out there. So they'll hook up into your Expensify and to your expensing tools and look at your credit card uh, expenses and identify, oh, someone created an AWS account. Oh, look at this. And they'll identify this uh, shadow IT stuff for you. So I find that. And it's, it's really interesting because uh, we ran into issues where AWS didn't have permission to do things with that account. You probably ran into the same thing. Uh, and so you had to get the account owner to give you permission to handle that account. Yes? 
in situations where most of your developers share the same permissions level, how do you stop them, or what mechanisms would you be able to use to stop them from just editing that in root permission when they decide, well, now I want to use this root uh, function, so I'm going to go change it back to the wildcard and not deny it? Oh, yeah, don't give them that permission. So that 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 is um, only that you can only do that from the master account. So in any case, you want to limit access to your master account to only limited few people who could apply those SCPs. So it's an administrative thing. So you know, a limit. I mean, in general, a general rule of thumb is limit master account access to only a few uh, admins. Is that is that answer your question? Yeah, that's my question. The, the question was, how do you limit access from people changing the flags uh, on the SCPs? And, and the idea would be to limit access. Uh, yes? So, have you uh, used the, the security hub to, to monitor the whole environment? Say again? Oh, security hub. Yeah. Um, I've played with it um, with guard duty. Yeah, I mean, I've used it, so um, it won't. It won't monitor everything, but um, in, in this, what I'm talking about, I guess, is more prevention. So kind of setting up guardrails to prevent uh, things from happening. So if you're noticing things, you could use SCPs to prevent things, but you want to get at the root cause of what's, what's happening in your environment. Okay. Yes? Privileged IAM accounts. Yeah. Uh, so the question is, do you have do you recommend any tools to uh, manage privileged IAM accounts um, in AWS? Uh, there is a couple. I mean, there's a couple tools out of the box uh, from AWS that will have you run permissions and show you what permissions uh, IAM users are using uh, out of the box, and so you can um, do an audit of that. Um, I recommend you know just as a best practice having different roles. You know, you have a developer, maybe a super developer, uh, your network admin, uh, IM admin, um, you know, a few, very few super admins, right? Um, and then try to use automation so that things are run and pushed through Terraform and GitHub so that there's an audit, audit log, an audit trail of what's done. And so if you can see things done through a GitHub commit, um, and it's been approved, that PR has been approved, then you have some sort of audit trail and, and some permissions. Does that answer your question? Kind of. Kind of, right? Yes? Have you seen much of use case for SCPs to enforce best practice in a service? So for instance, only allow like EC2 volumes to be encrypted as a whitelist, is that a thing? Uh, that could be a thing. That could be a thing. I haven't used it, but I think that could that'd be a great, uh, that, I mean, the, I think the, the, you're unlimited in, in, in what you could do. Yes. I was just going to say, can you use SCPs to enforce tagging uh, and like a tagging scheme, schema that you want to use? Have you tried that at all? Um, I don't know. Specific tags on specific types of instances? Or just in general for accounts for how folks are just like, say, I want to always name something, like always have an owner tag for right. anything that's created under that account. I can imagine you can. I, I, I believe you can. You, you must have an owner tag. You must have a right. description tag. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, so the question is, can you use SCPs to enforce tags? I believe you can. Um, so basically, what I would imagine is, uh, you know, when 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 you have an EC2 run, uh, put a condition to require a tag, for example. Um, but I haven't created one, but yeah, I would imagine so. Yes. Um. So there's a few tools out there. Um, I guess ask me afterwards. I can I can answer. There's a few out of the box from uh, CloudTrail. I'm sorry, from AWS that will let you take a look at permissions. Are you talking about permissions? The permissions question. So I, I, if I understand the question, what tools are there available to take a look at permissions and audit, audit logs or just permissions? So with audit logs, I mean, so CloudTrail, you have now uh, a lot of the IAM logs are going in CloudTrail. You could use any sort of tool, uh, Elk, Splunk, SumoLogic. Uh, there's a few. There's a bunch uh, out there. Um, uh, yeah, I don't recommend specific vendors uh, necessarily. So, yeah. So that brings like a question like, are there like tools which do like anomaly detection automatically, which does, okay, 
this something is wrong, somebody did something, like it automatically tells you like that. Are there things existing? Or there are. So the question is, are there anomaly tools uh, out there that look for anomalies. Well, there's guard duty out of the box uh, for AWS. I don't work for AWS, by the way. Um, there are other tools that will ingest your logs and look for anomalies. A lot of times you have to write uh, those out. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Security Hub and guard duty and that whole like ecosystem, that's AWS's recommendation? Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be posting these slides. So, yeah, these slides will be posted. Yes? Have you used AWS config? Do you have any thoughts around that? I have, um, but I say it with a sigh. So, um, it's, it's um, I don't know if I want to go on record. But, yeah, I've used <laughs> AWS. <laughs> I've used AWS config. The question is, have you used AWS config, and what are your thoughts on that? Um, I have thoughts on that. Um, I think you know it works for for some organizations. Um, it's something good. I think it's better than nothing. Um, but I think with the convergence of a lot of tools that are coming out there, there's a lot of overlap that I'm seeing. So, and that's the hard thing with AWS is like. You know, you'll find someone that creates a tool, either open source or commercial, and then AWS comes with something. But then it's kind of half-assed, like everything else that comes out of AWS when you know when it comes out. Uh, it's kind of like uh, AWS kind of beta tests things on on the public, and then you know six months later, it's kind of better. 